Hello and welcome to Wasted Potential, the show where we discuss the wasted potential of our favourite plotlines. The first two characters I wanted to cover on this show have a surprising amount in common. Both Sulfitia and Sindel are top tier MILF waifus whose great potential revolves heavily around their children, but in very different ways. Yes, it took a while to get to Sindel, but that's only because her episode calls back a little to the MKX and Melina episodes. Sindel made her debut in Mortal Kombat 3. 10,000 years prior, the forces of Outworlds won 10 straight Mortal Kombats against the warriors of Edenia, allowing Shao Kahn to invade. He killed King Jared and took Queen Sindel as his wife and Princess Kitana as his daughter, then merged Edenia with Outworld. In her grief and despair, Sindel committed suicide soon after. Khan kept her soul trapped as part of a long-term backup plan in case the Mortal Kombat thing didn't pan out. After losing an official tournament and his own unofficial tournament to Earthrealm, reducing the millennium he had spent trying to invade Earthrealm to nothing, Khan takes advantage of a loophole in the rules of Mortal Kombat. If Sindel, the Emperor's legal wife, were to turn up in the rival realm, he would have the right to travel there personally to retrieve her, presumably to prevent her from being abducted and used as leverage against him. As such, he has Shang Tsung resurrect Sindel in Earthrealm realm and place her under a mind control spell, commencing the invasion. Katana, who had recently defected to Earthrealm, learns that her mother is alive and is able to break through the brainwashing, restoring Sindel to her former self. With Khan's defeat, not only is the partial merger of Earthrealm and Outworld undone, but Edenia is restored too and Sindel returns to the throne. She is betrayed and incapacitated by Tanya and Quan Chi prior to MK4 so that Shinnok can enact his plans in Edenia. After that, Katana joins her allies in battle in the Deadly Alliance where most of them are killed. They are then resurrected by the revived Onaga and placed under his mind control in MK Deception. Sindel then sets out with Katana's best friend Jade to save Katana. Here we see a wonderful role reversal. Previously, it was the daughter who sought to save her mother who was resurrected under the Emperor of Outworld's mind control. Now, it is the mother who seeks to save her daughter who was resurrected under the Emperor of Outworld's mind control. Unfortunately, it's Liu Kang and Ermac who release Katana and the others. But it's the thought that counts. Sindel dies along with everyone else in Armageddon and the timeline is reset by Raiden. In the new timeline... There really are no words. Every single element of the death and resurrection of Sindel is changed for seemingly no reason, and it's all for the worse. For a start, her suicide was not a selfish act of escape, but a noble act of self-sacrifice. See, through her death, according to Quan Chi, Sindel was able to provide a level of protection to Earthrealm that even the Elder Gods can't. Bear in mind, the Elder Gods' protection is the Mortal Kombat tournament, suggesting that even if Khan's forces had won the tournament, Sindel's protection would have stopped him from getting through anyway. It's also makes one question why she didn't think to use this super special magic power to protect her own realm, but on top of making absolutely no sense it ruins her redemption arc. Much like making Greedo shoot first so that Han only kills him in self defence to make him more likeable from the start, this robs the arc of its impacts because the character was always heroic now. Sindel's suicide was now for the greater good, meaning she doesn't have nearly as much to make up for in Deception and Armageddon. Her abandonment of her daughter and her people now requires requires far less effort to earn forgiveness for. Additionally, her body is buried in Jade's desert in Outworld, not even a tomb for the Empress, which also suggests she died in Outworld instead of Earthrealm. You'd think she'd have to die in Earthrealm to use this magic to protect Earthrealm, but I guess not. And then we get her resurrection. Instead of being part of Shao Kahn's long-term backup plan, it's now a scheme of Quan Chi's who also takes Shang Tsung's role as the one to resurrect her. Sindel's role in Khan's plans is also far less significant. While originally she was the living justification for Khan's invasion being legal, here she's just brought back to turn off her protective magic so Khan can go to Earthrealm. Beyond that, he may as well just kill her because she'll be a liability if Katana is able to break through Quan Chi's mind control. Instead, he keeps her around doing nothing in his throne room until Motaro's death. This inspires Khan to kill Shang Tsung and give his power to Sindel, allowing her to face the heroes and massacre them all. I guess Shang Tsung's greatest power was a projection of a stupidity field around himself, which Sindel uses to stop the heroes from using their powers, weapons and numbers to their advantage. Nightwolf sacrifices himself to take her out, joining the other heroes as Quan Chi's undead thralls in the Netherrealm. In MKX, Sindel continues serving Shinnok and Quan Chi, being the only Revenant NPC in the story mode. She shows more personality than any of them aside from Liu Kang, and remains a corrupted zombie by the end since contrived bullshit prevents him from being restored. She now serves Liu Kang and Katana in the Netherrealm going into MK11, likely as an advisor, assuming she doesn't end up forgotten like Jade was 
in MKX. In addition to ruining Sindel's arc, the new timeline also ruins the image new fans have of Sindel. We haven't yet seen Sindel in the new timeline when she's not under mind control, despite the fact that she debuted seven years ago. All new fans have to go on is her corrupted self, so they'll think she's just a bitch. And on top of that, her being the one to wipe out the heroes in MK2011 means that it puts a lot of the fans' ire at this moment on her instead, which she doesn't deserve. Sindel is a great character when handled competently, which she hasn't been since at least 2006. As with Melina, let's imagine the existing story being retold with a greater emphasis on Sindel's true personality and her character growth. 10,000 years ago, Sindel's realm was annexed by Outworld and her husband was killed by Shao Kahn. She was then forced to marry the Emperor, who also adopted her daughter, who may or may not have been a child at the time. As discussed in the Align Through Time episode, given the 9,000 years between Edenia's fall and the start of the Earthrealm conflict, this may well have been the first realm Kahn conquered, perhaps even driven by a certain affection for Sindel herself, making her the reason her people were targeted, adding further guilt to her conscience. In despair and thinking only of herself, Herself, Sindel committed suicide, abandoning her daughter and her people to suffer under Shao Kahn's rule. Her soul is kept imprisoned by Khan until he can make use of it in one of his long-term backup plans. After losing to Earthrealm twice in a row, Khan has Sindel revived under mind control in Earthrealm to justify an invasion. During this time, she meets Melina, Katana's clone. What is her relationship with Melina? With Katana having recently defected to Earthrealm, perhaps the corrupted Sindel disowns her daughter and takes Melina as her real daughter. This could give Melina a sense of family she either has never felt or hasn't since Katana defected and killed her. Katana and Melina's potential rematch could even be orchestrated by Sindel, either as a sick means of seeing which woman is most worthy of being her and Khan's daughter, or as a lovingly conceived opportunity for Melina to prove herself. Katana learns of her mother's return and prioritises reaching her to save her. This could cause some tension between her and her allies, as the more pragmatic among them think their best option is just to kill Sindel. As a Shaolin monk who would rather see life preserved, Liu Kang sides with Katana on the issue, further developing their relationship. Luckily, Katana gets to Sindel first and is able to get through to her. Thanks to having had millennia to think and seeing her daughter go through so much for her sake, Sindel realises what a terrible queen she once was. She abandoned her people and her daughter, yet her daughter still loved her enough to go against her allies and risk her own life to save her. Sindel vows to be a better queen, a better mother, one truly deserving of the love of her people and her daughter. While Katana and Jade are happy with this, there is some discontent among the Edenians. Case in point, Tanya. She is a traitor to Edenia, though we were never really given a solid explanation as to why. In MKX, she is depicted as working with Melina to secure a free Edenia, suggesting a desire to protect her homeworld. Apply that idea here. She is disgusted that Sindel is back on the throne after the selfish actions she committed all those years ago. She wants to see Sindel removed from power and a more deserving monarch instated. This is what Shinnok promises Tanya to get her on his side, whether he approaches her or vice versa. Once Shinnok is defeated, however, Sindel continues as queen, redoubling her efforts to earn her place on the throne. A few years later, word reaches Sindel of Katana's death at the hands of the Deadly Alliance. Perhaps she learns this when Onaga invades Edenia with Katana as his pawn and has Katana guard Sindel's prison cell. It would come as quite a blow to Sindel to be utterly powerless to protect either her people or her daughter. Jade frees her from her cell and helps her flee to Outworld, which she reluctantly agrees to, not wanting to abandon her daughter and her people yet again. Jade chimes in with some tough love to get her ass moving, and the two flee to plan their next move. Now, canonically, it is is Ermac and Liu Kang that free the heroes, but I propose a slight change. Sindel and Jade meet the two as they travel outward and team up. Sure, it's less impressive for three to take on the five than for Ermac to hold off four at once while his comrade does his thing, but I think it works better, allowing both groups to succeed in their respective redemption quests. More on Ermac later. That done, Sindel joins up with the hero straight away in preparation for the Battle of Armageddon, which will take place in her realm, determined not to allow her people to ever again suffer because she didn't take the initiative to protect them. If there is no time alteration story, she is likely one of the warriors to die permanently, finding comfort in the fact that her sacrifice was able to protect her people and that they will be in good hands under the rule of Queen Katana. 
As for the new timeline, I would have had Sindel be one of the Revenants freed during the time skip. I mean, if half of them aren't going to contribute to the plot or are entirely absent like Jade, they may as well have been restored and played non-essential roles in cutscenes. Sindel is in a much worse place here. 10,000 years after her death, she's revived and the first thing she does is assist in the invasion of Earthrealm and then kills her own daughter who is now an undead thrall of Quan Chi as a result. And worse, Edenia was not restored in this timeline. Perhaps she is reintroduced as part of the Outworld Civil War storyline, siding with either Kotal Khan or Melina to see Edenia restored and to gain them as an ally for when she goes after Quan Chi. I'd probably choose Melina because it puts a really tragic spin on the situation, that she is so guilt-ridden over Katana's death that she is effectively using Katana's clone as a surrogate daughter to ease her conscience. Melina can sense this and is either using this to manipulate Sindel or is actually embracing the idea of having a mother herself. Eventually, Sindel encounters Katana and you can go one of three ways. 1. Sindel is able to get through to her daughter and helps free her from the Netherrealm's hold, even if she remains a Revenant, as a parallel to Deception. She has now redeemed herself for abandoning Katana and also killing her, and will now work with Katana to restore Edenia, or at least ensure their people's protection under Outworld. 2. She fails to get through to her, but remains determined to save her, even if it means killing her to free her soul. Maybe she leads an Edenian army into battle with the Netherrealm in the next game. 3. As a tragic inversion of deception, she fails and is murdered by Katana, who still holds a grudge for her abandonment and death. She is then turned back into a revenant, bound to the will of Katana as her slave, or demeaned even further as her pet. Sindel is a great character with a wonderful redemption arc if handled correctly. Unfortunately, the developers have never really capitalised on the concept and the new timeline may have ruined it forever. On a slightly more positive note, the writers of MKX at least cared enough to make Sindel a prominent revenant with speaking lines in two NPC fights, so maybe they either intended to make her DLC in MKX or have plans to have her come back in MK11. Maybe it ties into the missing Jade and her mysterious MK2011 ending. God, I don't have to do a Jade episode as well, do I? Damn it. Okay, just at least wait until we see what they have installed for her in MK11. Right now, I'm more concerned with wrapping up this, um, ah, call it the Royal Family Trilogy. To make up for the no doubt crushing disappointment, I'll leave you off with some fun trivia. Leah Montelongo, who played Serena in MK Mythologies and Tanya in MK4, played Sindel in MK3 at age 19. Yeah, the makeup team deserves a fucking Oscar for that one. She was actually in a relationship with Sh Shao Kahn's actor for a few years too. I guess if Khan was less of a dick it might have worked out for him and he'd have the best MK wife imaginable. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and check out some of these other videos? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you.